Hey, hi, hello guys, my name is Mia Marie and you are currently watching my Sinistry compatibility series where I go through all the 12 signs, sun signs, and how they get along. Now, as a general disclaimer, we reference so much more than just the sun sign for compatibility, but the importance of the sun and understanding someone's sun sign and accepting it and supporting it is that the sun sign describes the motives, the behaviors, the experiences that contribute to someone's sense of sanity. So we're not talking so much about what someone needs emotionally or how they flirt or what makes them great in bed, all of those very, you know, romantic uh, topics, we're talking about how to support someone's vitality, someone's sense of self, and someone's healing human journey. So keep in mind that this is just a gentle introduction, and you can get so much more by booking a session with me or another fantastic astrologer. 90% of my dad's side of the family is Gemini, so I have been around this energy my whole life. <laughs> Gemini is the third sign of the zodiac, and so we're still in that personal perspective quadrant as it relates to what the soul wants to do. What does the soul want to do when you're a sun in Gemini? The motive behind all behavior, thoughts, failures, projects, sanity is to lovingly communicate wisdom. Gemini goes around asking questions collecting information. So when you say you don't like something, Gemini hears, oh, they must not understand it. And they explain to you why you don't like it and what the, where this person is coming from. And the walls start to crumble. And in the place of walls, we have acceptance. We have mutual understanding and connectedness. That's the blessing of Gemini. If you ever dated a Gemini or you're dating one now, you'll recognize that they are always working the room. Partially because they're an air sign and they need to communicate, it contributes to their vitality and their life force and their life mission, but also because when you talk to people, you get stories. And Gemini is great at listening to stories. It wants an interesting story, but it's also a gifted storyteller. And in every story is a lesson. And so that's what they're doing when they're going around working the room. And you can be sitting there thinking, oh, am I just not interesting enough? You're always all over the place. You're always talking to people. Why can't you just sit here and be with me now? And the real answer, my genuine response to that is no, they can't just sit there. I mean, on an isolated instance, of course, but if you expect Gemini to sit down next to you and you guys do things together, I mean, unless you can keep up, unless you're just as quick witted, then that's fine. But if you want them to stay in place, no, no, they want to work the room. So as I was saying, Gemini is an air sign, which means that it's fueled by communication and intellect. It realizes like, oh, I have a brain and my brain can think different thoughts. And these thoughts create realities. Now, because it's this air element is expressed through Gemini, Gemini is focused on collecting information for itself and its immediate environment. So it will likely be a teacher to its family, its children, its partner, its community at large, right? That would be a large expression of Gemini. Usually it's like a classroom of people or a group of people so it's who is teaching and talking to. But it's really focused on building a library of information about the world. It wants to squeeze 10 lifetimes into one. They're also known to be duplicitous in nature. Geminis are two-faced, phony and fickle. The explanation for that is actually quite simple. And the terminology might sound similar. I'm just gonna say it first. They have an inner child that just will not quit. Now I know in mainstream, you know, social media, we hear about inner child healing. They're not focused on inner child healing. They're just a child that wants to play and have fun and engage with life for all the selfish reasons. But then there is this mature adult who has learned and developed and can impart wisdom. And so they teeter between the two in social interactions, depending on how they feel. And they enjoy that they can choose to be an adult or a child in any given situation. They also have the legacy of being non-committal. And when I hear that, I think about their mythological parallel 
And it's the messenger between the worlds. It's the only character in mythology that doesn't have a home. And I see this through and through with Gemini characters. They want to be on the move. In mythology, the messenger goes from heaven to earth to hell over and over again because it's collecting as much information. As I said before, that's what it lives for. That's what it wants and that's what it's good at. In fact, it's the only energy that can move in that way. And so... When a Gemini thinks about a relationship, it thinks that it has to stay still, that it can't have freedom anymore, or that it is liable, reliable, not reliable, it's liable to someone somewhere, that someone is waiting on them. And even though they may not act like they don't care, it's something that weighs on their mind, like, oh man, I, I, I'm not showing up for this person, or I'm not doing this, and it just creates ambivalence towards the idea of relationship but Gemini is good at relationship once they find someone who they vibe with who can speak the same language or if you can't speak the same language and you're not doing the same things can exert tolerance and acceptance and encouragement towards their desire to stay on the move some deal breakers for Gemini they don't like a negative Nancy anyone who is overly emotional, gets lost in emotions, has a heaviness to their to their aura, to their vibe, is going to repel them because it's the opposite of what they want. It's the opposite of what makes them feel stable within themselves, even though, you know, they are constantly in motion. I wouldn't consider them to be the most stable. <laughs> Another thing they can't stand is if you can't have a conversation, playful, witty banter, if you're not intellectual, if you're not learning, if you're not stimulated by ideas and thoughts and theories, and you can't contribute to their overall development as it relates to the intellect and the mind, they're going to get bored and they're going to find you uninteresting. You don't listen or you're unable to understand what they're communicating. Gemini people, I hear this the most from them. When they have relationship complaints, it's, I don't feel heard. I don't feel understood. I don't feel like you get me. And they're not talking about their vibe. They're talking about what they're literally saying to you. It's like falling on deaf ears. They have the gift of the gab. They want to appreciate it. You have to also have an appreciation for humor because for them, life is a joke. The whole thing is the joke until it's not and their little child comes out and everything really matters. It's super important. But for the most part, they like to, you know, poke fun at you and they don't want you to have a full-blown tantrum. So all in all, Gemini is the third sign of the Zodiac. It's intellectual. It's here to create a story. It's trying to collect a lot of information. It's a socially oriented sign and it requires freedom and not because it doesn't like you or doesn't love you but because it's trying to stay sane it's trying to develop and it's trying to grow someone who is born with their son in aquarius has a soul that came into this world to awaken our consciousness it's almost as if they have a different set of eyes than the rest of us they see the world differently and a lot of the time stereotypical astrology is like oh my god you're trying to be different or you're trying to be unique no that's just the way that they see the world and often it creates this immediate recognition that you don't fit anywhere aquarius doesn't fit in any specific space and it creates social anxiety they don't know how to act they don't know what to say they don't know what to do there is an ambivalence towards being around people because they don't quite it doesn't compute in their head their minds are like computers they are the 11th sign, which means that they are the third, the eldest air sign. So they take the perspective, the information that Gemini can, collects, they know that they have a mind, and then they take the information that Libra collects, they know how to put themselves in other people's shoes, they know how to compromise, they know how to negotiate, they know how to establish trust, and then they go, okay, how do we get everyone to trust each other? How do we create a community? And how do we develop this community? How do we transform our experience of life together? How do we elevate everybody? The interesting paradox with Aquarius is that they are knowledgeable. They're a resource. They have leadership skills. They are often the people that others go to when they don't know what to do as it relates to a community or group activity. They're human rights activists. They can find the gaps in structures. They know how to advance us in a very positive way, but they don't like being the center of attention. And oftentimes they don't like talking about themselves. They may feel internally like they don't want to attach to a label because they have a hard time 
accepting and celebrating the ego. They're the opposite of Leo. Leo is all about, here's my personality, here's how I shine. Aquarius takes that attitude but positions it towards the community. How can we shine? How can we develop? How can we be celebrated? in the most honest and authentic way. And so you'll find that they're comfortable behind a computer or on a phone, but can be a little socially awkward. I think that they would feel socially awkward or as if there is never a place for them, even when they are in a community. And this feeling can be uncomfortable for them at first. It can manifest as social anxiety and they may even avoid social situations depending on where they are inside of their head but it serves a purpose. And that purpose is that you need to remain detached enough so that you can innovate, so that you can think your own thoughts, so that you can go off in your own direction. And oftentimes they're trailblazers, they're trendsetters. They are always 10 steps ahead of the community. And because they are also a fixed sign, they're stubborn, they are unmovable in that. They have to have a certain level of confidence in their ideas and opinions in order to say, no, I'm not going to conform. You are gonna come here and here's why you're gonna come here. And this is how it benefits you. And this is how the human race is developing, whether you like it or not. They have this amazing ability to gaze into space and project a very clear image of a future that is totally within our capability. Like we can totally arrive to that space with them. I've said this and I will continue to say it, that even though Aquarius is an air sign, it is very sensitive, more sensitive than it realizes. And what happens when they're overstimulated is they become numb and they detach. This is the soul wound of someone who has strong Aquarius in their chart because things are always changing and because these changes affect so many people in so many negative ways that they feel equipped or responsible for repairing, they will detach from the part of themselves that cares just to stay afloat, just to stay with the changes in culture and society. And so there is this robotic tone to them or there can be just an obvious lack of emotion. You can be struggling with something and you can be crying in front of them and explaining all the which ways that you're heartbroken or let down or, and just the opposite. You could be super happy about something and there's this robot before you like, I understand. Their, the way of loving is that they've often researched what you're going through and what's going on in your brain and how humans typically act and how to repair that specific thing. And so they're able to like spit back this report to solve your problem, but it can be hard for them to stay in the emotion or to sympathize with you. And it's not a reflection of how much they do or don't care about you. It's more so a reflection of their internal state of being. It's hard for them to access emotions. Surprisingly enough, however, they make excellent partners because they understand the Libra lesson of trust and compromise, but they also are not looking for something hot and fiery, you know, that flirty fling that Gemini wants. They want a friend. They understand that if they are going to commit to something long-term, they have to be with someone that they like. They don't have to have the same interests, but this person has to be stimulating and intelligent and good-hearted and good-spirited. They want to be with their best friend. That is their ideal partner. And so they may hesitate to commit. I haven't heard too many complaints about Aquarius people not getting into relationships, but when they do, it tends to last because they do think long-term. And they often choose someone from a, I don't want to say non-emotional space because the spirit, the soul does respond to people, but it's not so much about how you make them feel. It's that you guys are just so compatible with each other that it makes sense for you to be together. And that's why Valentine's Day is surprises everybody that it's in an Aquarius season but traditionally, that's when people were getting married. And statistically, Aquarians have the most success when they get married because, again, they marry for the right reasons. They're using their head and their soul together to make the judge, the judge, the just, the just call. Aquarius and love, they will want to talk to you. They'll want to know what you're thinking, what you've learned what is stimulating you. They're going to have those late night conversations. They're going to be very present with you. And 
again, not super emotional about it, but they, they are wanting to collect data on you. They're, they're going to master you in one way, shape and form. That's a kind of hidden quality to them is that they're constantly collecting data on you. So they can put it into their computer and they know what to expect and they know what you want and they know where you are mentally, emotionally. And um, they're, they're just so friendly that that's what it is they're just so nice to be around i don't have any complaints about an aquarius now some downsides to dating an aquarius or not downsides but what they don't like is they don't like somebody who is negative emotional or moody because it flies in the face of their energy and it's not so much that you affect their mood it's like what you're saying and what you're doing is irritating and inefficient and a waste of time. And those are all things that they prize. They like being efficient. They like using energy positively. And if you're focused on things from the past or things that you can't control, then you're not making good use of this brilliant brain that you have. Another thing they won't like is if you're impolite or rude to other people, or if you don't care about social movements. If you are mispronouncing people's names after they've corrected you, if you're not in the know about what communities are working through what, or if you have a blatant disregard for the overall quality of humanity and in, in people's lives, they will have no respect for you because this is what their life is about. They are in service to people. They are trying to break the minds, the structures that keep us bound and limited and trapped in a pastime. And so you embodying that energy, it's like, oh my God, no, you're the enemy, you're the foe. Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Uranus. Uranus is the modern ruler, but Saturn is the traditional ruler. And so typically you have two types of Aquarius. And what's interesting is that they embody both of them at different times of their life. So either the Aquarius person comes in very quirky, atypical, doesn't fit in. And then as time goes on, they become more Capricorn-like. They're more serious and they're about the mission and, and the rules and following protocols, or you have someone who ages backwards, who is all about the rules and tools and following what authority says and doing what you're supposed to do. And then they get really quirky in their older years. So it just depends. Now going back to deal breakers, Aquarians are rebellious by their programming. They come into this world needing to stir shit up, needing to awaken our consciousness to pull us along. If it weren't for Aquarians, we wouldn't have women's rights. We wouldn't have gay rights. It's though it's that energy that progresses us, pro progresses, up, pro progresses us as the human race. And so if they are trying to rebel against a specific structure and they're starting to embody that rebellious energy and you shun them and you further ostracize them, if you are not a friend or an ally in their development and experimentation, they're, they're going to want to leave you because they're stubborn. That's what they do. They dig their heels in. They won't be emotional about it. They won't yell at you. They won't raise their voice. They won't criticize you. They'll just sit you down and say, you know, this isn't working out. I don't think we're a good match. And they can do this because their passion is towards people, groups, social reform. And so they don't inherently want or see the need for a partner unless they have a partner who, you know, is truly a partner and shows up for them and supports them, then they understand the value of that relationship. But until that point, if you're just a nuisance, if you're just another critic, if you're just someone who makes them feel more weird than they already feel, what's the point of having you? See your way to the door. Thank you, bye. I will say this though, one thing that I've noticed through working with clients with Aquarius placements is that once they are in a committed relationship, and they have in their mind said, I'm going to be with this person for the long run, if they actually have married somebody and it's not working out, it can take them a long time to actually leave. And it's because they're committed, they're stubborn, they're a fixed sign. They often do what they believe in. And I think that's kind of the lesson that you learn when you're with these types of partners is Aquarians awaken to their own unconscious motives through these dysfunctional relationships. They, they self-actualize through these relationships that don't work, but that fixed quality allows them to stay in relationships that they would otherwise recognize as unhealthy. But all in all, Aquarius is a great partner in 
I would say passion, I would say play, but it's neither of those. They're just a great partner to have in life because they will commit to you, they won't play games, and they are focused on something bigger than themselves at all times. They wanna make an impact. They want to help us all grow and develop. Sun in Gemini, Sun in Aquarius. Textbook astrology will say that these two air signs are meant to be. They get along so well. And while I do agree that they get along so well, I will argue that this becomes more of a friendship than like a soulmate type of connection. And the reason why I say that is because air element, the element of air, is responsible for our executive functioning. It is the brain. It's very cerebral and intellectual. And so these two will be attracted to one another because they're like oh wow you have a brain that works <laughs> and they can talk endlessly about their ideas and their visions and what if this and what if that and they're good at organizing thoughts they can kind of you know fall and flow together as they spiral up into the worlds of intellect but the air element inherently is not emotional it is not where love grows where love thrives it's not a place where we see mm, the ability to stick to one another. There is no glue between this combination. A Gemini is ruled <clears throat> by Mercury, and this is the planet that is in charge of like learning and perception. It's literally like the eyes. And uh, Gemini is also the only sign in the zodiac that doesn't mind not having a home. It goes from heaven to earth to hell, all the time delivering message mess messages. It is the messenger for the gods. And while Aquarius will not be like, oh my God, come home, I miss you, uh, there is just distance. You know, if neither one of them are super dedicated or if neither of them have a need to be around the other, we, there's this huge gap that exists between the two of them. They can be gone for extended periods or they can be away from each other for extended periods of time. Gemini is also a little bit more youthful. It has a personal perspective. And so it comes into this world with magnifying glasses as eyes and it's trying to collect as much information about its immediate environment as possible to make sense of differences. Because in Gemini's mind, it's like, you don't hate something, you just don't understand it. And so it researches things and collects all these random facts and then turns around and teaches the rest of us how to not hate how to have oneness, how to have unity, which is nice. You know, and Aquarius does that on a grander scale because Gemini is so focused on creating a brain that it can rely on and, and filling that brain with information that will help it not only survive, but thrive uh, and inspire. And so uh, on the other hand, Aquarius is more universally oriented. So it already knows what Gemini is kind of going through. And it's also put itself in Libra's shoes of, you know, how does, how do my impacts, how, how do my thoughts, how do my actions impact other people? They know how to compromise. And so when we get to the Aquarian perspective, it's like, how do I use the information that I have about groups of people to create unity on a global scale? How do I focus, or who is being marginalized? Who is getting the shitty end of the stick? How does the hierarchy fuck us over? What is wrong in this structure? Who is at the bottom and why are they at the bottom? Who is getting treated this way? And Gemini will have an affinity towards, you know, those types of conversations and that line of work, but they will not directly insert themselves and dedicate energy over the long haul. And so we can see a gap where Aquarius kind of takes on the adult in the relationship and Gemini is the child in, in many ways, elementally. I mean, we're talking about the baby sign Gemini and the eldest Aquarius, but also Gemini has this Peter Pan-like syndrome where it likes to, again, run away. We have many correlations with Gemini needing to go from different land to land uh, to stay sane. They want to stay connected to their childlike energy and Aquarius doesn't really find that they don't necessarily desire that in a partner. Gemini also wants their partner to be fun and flirty and interesting. And in so many ways, Aquarius is quite predictable. It likes stability. It's co-ruled by Saturn and it's stubborn. So Gemini might find that there are times when Aquarius is just unmovable. It's not changing its mind. It has a certain set of beliefs and Gemini can feel as if they're talking to a wall. So that's another uh, particular issue. Some problem areas, because we all have them, is that Aquarius may find Gemini to be a little immature, phony, fake, and fickle. Gemini wants to say yes to everything. It wants to be everywhere all at once, but it just can't. And its curiosity really hops in the driver's seat from time to time. And that 
you know, the curiosity has strong correlations to that childlike wonder. And so the child is often in the seat of the soul and Aquarius just finds that distasteful and immature. And in fact, you know, Gemini can be doing social experiments or intellectual experiments on people all the time to try and make sense of whatever they're trying to make sense of. And Aquarius is like, your actions, your words have consequences. Look at how it affects this person. Look how it affects this company. Look how it affects people's representation of your culture. They'll bring it that far. And uh, they will want Gemini to be a leader. And that is just not what Gemini is here. Gemini is not here to lead the collective. That's Aquarius's job. And so you may find that Aquarius steps into that role of being the disciplinarian towards Gemini. Another problem area is that Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. And so when it chooses someone, it sticks with them. When it chooses a job, it sticks to it. When it chooses anything in life, it means it. It stands by what it says. And so as Gemini is pulling out all of these, what Aquarius will call like shenanigans, uh, Aquarius will be irritated, but they won't immediately leave. And so you'll kind of see these two have a war of the words, or it's like world war words <laughs> for quite some time uh, before, you know, one of them breaks. I doubt it will be the Gemini because the Gemini is still doing exactly what it wants. So at one point or another, the Aquarius is going to be like, you know what, this is actually exhausting. And, um, I, I have deep love for you, but I don't think that our morals align or our values align. Um, and it's just because Aquarius is a more developed expression of air and Gemini really won't care to hear, you know, all of the which ways they are not adulting because they don't want to be an adult <laughs> because these are two intellectually oriented signs we don't usually see too much emotional damage or digs done in fact what we do see when these two disagree is that they will use their word as their weapon they know what to say to irritate the other person and get an intellectual response um, and so they can kind of have a war of the words together but again, pretty, pretty detached emotionally. Uh, the blessing of this combination is that you guys are kind of working through the same things in the greater scheme of, of life, right? You're not so much focused on emotions. You're not focused on the material plane in your five senses. You're also not focused on uh, your, we have water, earth, fire. You're also not focused on developing any type of personality or, um, identity issues. These are people who are thinking, okay, how do we live as humans who are, you know, developed and intelligent and progressive um, in that way? So you guys won't have to code switch when you're talking to each other. You guys will understand each other naturally and you guys can almost predict what the other person is going to think in response to a specific stimulus. You guys also are on the same rhythm, which means that you guys wake up in the morning and you may feel rested, but you feel empty. In order for you to generate energy, you need to keep moving. That's how air signs generates or it start. Their pilot light is they have to get their body in motion, which seems counterintuitive to say, an air or a water or an earth sign but this is just how you guys operate and so you guys will find that you guys thrive when you guys are in motion because you're feeling more and more energized you guys get juiced in the same ways which is really nice so this is just one uh <laughs> component of 2000 different placements so if you would like to learn more about your specific relationship or your birth charts feel free to book a reading with me as i said if you have an Aquarius with Pisces placements or a water rising or a water Venus, this can create, you know, the necessary glue to keep these two together. Or maybe, you know, some lovely earth in there or some Saturn aspects could totally change the flavor of this dynamic and it, it can create the necessary friction to spark a fire. <laughs> All right. Toodles.